I'm going to walk through very quickly uh, some kind of overview on, on what we've been seeing in Bitcoin and blockchain, and then we will uh, turn it over to Nathaniel and Fred, which I'm very excited about. So, um, can we get the monitor working? Um, so, this should be pretty quick. I will really blow through this because I'm very excited for this panel. You guys got the routine. So, this is Mark Andreessen uh, kind of talking about what he thought would be, uh, you know, this sort of belief in, in Bitcoin, uh, so it being sort of this, uh, this big thing in 2014. Uh, and VC investors kind of have piled in, right? And I mentioned earlier that cumulative funding into Bitcoin and blockchain startups has eclipsed a billion dollars. Um, and so you kind of see that rise here. Um, you know, sort of the opposite view of Marx was, uh, was uh, made by Jamie Dimon, who basically said that no real non-controlled currency in the world will uh, ever be put up for by governments. So this is sort of the other view. Um, you know, and so Bitcoin's had its kind of travails, right? It had, you know, the Silk Road kind of episode. You had Mt. Gox. Um, and I showed this earlier. This is sort of, you know, the me media attention to Bitcoin sort of is, you know, still pretty good, but definitely has come down. Um, but the narrative is definitely what we've seen, even in the data, has shifted to blockchain. So people are more interested in sort of the technical innovation underlying, uh, underlying Bitcoin. So, and we see that also in sort of the attention. So blockchain has sort of become increasingly popular um, over time. Uh, and the applications, you know, obviously are limitless. It's not just within financial services, e-commerce, patents. You know, we've seen it in a whole different music, a whole bunch of different areas. Uh, so blockchain as a protocol has, has a lot of applications. Um, and so we see kind of now the shift in terms of where Series A money is going. And so it's going, you know, more so to uh, blockchain startups than it is to kind of what we describe as, as Bitcoin. So the money has shifted. Um, three out of the five largest sort of investments in this world are focused on blockchain enablement. So it's a uh, you know, again, when you look at sort of sentiment of investors, it has shifted a bit from Bitcoin to blockchain. Um, you know, this is, you know, one of the reasons I think financial services players in particular are so excited about blockchain is that because of the am amazing amounts of money that they spend on technology um, and then the opportunity. So if I go back to this, you know, payments, $1.7 trillion uh, kind of opportunity for them and you know, depending on estimates, obviously they vary, but you see Goldman here has an estimate of it being a $6 billion a year savings and, and Santander has 20 billion. So massive opportunities. And when you see that kind of stuff, the suits have shown up. Um, so financial services firms have gotten very aggressive, especially in, in blockchain. Uh, when you look at the largest deals, they've been almost, you know, all the largest deals have, have had corporate involvement. Uh, and so it's been pretty diverse. It's been payments companies, insurance, New York Stock Exchange, etc. So it's not any particular sort of sub-vertical within financial services, but across the board. Um, and so you see kind of these are the different partnerships that are being struck. Uh, and even JP Morgan, who's kind of had that bearish tone on Bitcoin, is sort of become a, a little softer in sort of their tone on what's happening. And so you see partnerships and things on the, on the blockchain side. So, um, and then here you see kind of just the diversity of players that I mentioned earlier. So everybody from USAA, Wedbush, you know, Goldman Sachs, et cetera. So you, not just the diversity of the players, but also the intensity of investment from incumbents into Bitcoin and blockchain companies. Uh, and this is kind of the corporate strategics again, just looking at sort of the web of, of investments into, uh, into that space. So kind of open questions and, and Nathaniel and, and Fred will dig into a lot other questions, a lot other sort of more interesting questions hopefully as well, but kind of which of these applications of blockchain is going to get the most traction, right? People are talking about it in insurance, in payments, in lending, um, you know, which of those is going to come out of the gate and maybe get the traction earliest. Um, you know, regulation, obviously sort of clarity around regulation creates confidence in this type of protocol. So what's that going to look like? How are regulators going to keep up with it? Um, and then sort of the general sort of trust uh, issues around uh, a new kind of technology and innovation like this.